Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to do one of my favorite things. We're going to play with paint. These paints specifically. These brand new Atom paints from Big Child Creatives. We're going to put them through their paces, see how they work. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. So these paints are uh, from Big Child Creatives but specifically uh, my understanding is they were designed by Ruben Martinez, a really amazing artist, uh, in conjunction with Ammo by MIG and Big Child. So basically all three of those uh, people and groups came together to make this set of paints. Uh, I picked these up at Adepticon and I was pretty excited about them. Now, as you may have noticed from the size of the box, it's a relatively limited paint set. Uh, so what we're talking about here is really highly saturated colors that are more for mixing. So this is more akin to a traditional artist set of colors where you're sort of expected to mix all of the uh, higher tint or shade or off tones or all those sorts of things. Uh, so if you're not interested in mixing paints, well then right away, this isn't the set for you. But let's start by getting them out on the palette. Uh, so here I've laid out all 12 of the colors. You basically have what you would expect, so kind of everything in the rainbow, uh, plus magenta, then we've got a white, a black, uh, a flesh color, so on. So uh, all in all, it's a nice paint set. Uh, as you can see, the brown is more of a dark umber. Uh, all the colors are really saturated, really punchy. And the first thing you should notice from how they are on the palette is that they are very creamy. The bottles work very smoothly. They're actually quite easy to sort of operate one-handed. I know that sounds silly, but it is just easy to get paint out. They don't really make a mess. Paint drops right out. Sets very evenly. Self-levels very well. Um, extremely consistent, smooth, creamy uh, type of paint. And importantly, all of the paints, regardless of color, seem to basically have the same sort of viscosity, thickness, and so on. Uh, so that's uh, actually a big mark in their favor because you just know that you're going to get about the same consistency. You can thin all of these paints with about the same ratios and get similar performance out of all of them. Speaking of performance, let's go ahead and put this to work on a miniature. Now I'm going to use this Blight King here to start out. Now I'm going to, this is sort of, you're going to see a whole, I'm going to paint this whole miniature and you're going to see me mix the paints each time uh, as we go to the next step. I'm not going to always worry about exactly describing what you see, more I'm going to talk about my general experiences with it and sometimes it'll reference out to what you're seeing on the screen there. But we start, of course, with the flesh tone. Now, there is a flesh tone in here, but of course, uh, I actually normally mix all of my own flesh tones, but I decided to experiment with this one for the sake of the video, but try to turn it a little more dead and sap a lot of the life out of it. So you can see how I mix in um, some greens and yellows, a little bit of things like that, a little bit of purple, that kind of stuff here and there, um, to get a nice sort of base Blight King tone. I want it to feel sickly and dead, and that's pretty easy to get there. This is a pretty neutral, slightly pink skin tone uh, that comes in the bottle, so it is pretty easy to manipulate around with the various other colors uh, in the uh, packet here, in the, in the box. Uh, but I just get that skin color on there, and then what I want to do is basically now start to play with things like purples and the greens and work on those. So once I have the base skin tone down, my next step is to start making shadow tones. Um, so I basically start taking uh, some of the deeper, darker tones, uh, as well as to worry about the highlights. So we're going to do both of those things. So I'm going to first integrate and mix in some yellows, uh, highlight all of those out, work some highlights. Then I'm going to, you know, just kind of basically focus on the areas you think. Again, I'm really trying to mix in a lot of the colors here. So I go to like the yellows, uh, the white to build up many of my highlights as I'm working that. And then to work down in the shadows, I'm going to take some purples and some of that original green to kill it out, bring that into my flesh tone, and then have that nice softer, soft purple shadow, which feels very appropriate and sickly for the sort of bruised flesh of uh, the Blight King. All in all, uh, it doesn't look too amazing at this point, but it's dead skin. It's supposed to look pretty flat and uninteresting. We're going to pop it out. We want it to be really neutral because we're going to pop it out with the rest of the colors um, that we work on here. Okay, um, so the next thing to do with the skin on all Nurgle models is hit all those wounds. Uh, so here we're going to get a chance to play with both the purple and magenta tones. I kind of mix these together as well as using them individually uh, to do the open sores and wounds and exposed flesh. 
Uh, so I take that to make the sort of sunken wounds, and then I'm going to take some of that magenta and and uh, and so so on to actually just show the sort of uh, infected, bruised flesh uh, that's in a. And I use this as a glaze to cover all of those areas. Uh, and then sort of my next thing up is to start working on uh, the armor. While I'm doing that, I want to kind of talk more about the consistency that I found so far as I was painting through it. So first of all, I've noted as I paint these, they actually have a really nice opacity. So they go on really cleanly. Uh, as you can see here with the, the green over uh, the zenithal, like it's a good solid coat of the color. Uh, generally, I found with a few of the colors you would expect, like the yellows and the, the reds, things like that, the tones that are more transparent, you do have to put on sort of two coats of the thing. Uh, but they're really, they have a nice strong opacity, and after basically two coats, even over black, I was able to achieve full opacity and get a nice, smooth, very level uh, layer. In addition, uh, these are all very matte. It's always hard to tell on camera under all the lights we're shooting under and stuff here, but... Uh, the finish on these is extremely matte. Uh, I didn't really see, even with the purple and the red, which are normally two colors where you have the uh, sort of satin problem, I really didn't see much of any of that occurring. Um, maybe the purple is a tad bit more satin than everything else, but it is very minimal. For the most part, these are extremely matte paints, which I actually love. Uh, I love super hyper matte paints. I want to control the light completely. So the finish to me was actually uh, great and exactly what I was looking for. As you can see, we moved on to the purple cloth. And here I'm going to integrate some of the flesh tone in again, as well as some of the black to do both the base purple cloth, but then also my highlights and shadows. I found this was very natural and easy. Uh, one thing about these is that they do blend pretty easy. They're clearly highly pigmented. So when I wanted to do things like uh, feather them out, that was pretty simple. I found making a glaze to be a really, really effective, nice thing. Uh, what I mean by that is they glaze well. They don't break up, they don't break down. Um, somehow those mean the same thing, I guess? Whatever. Uh, at any rate, I found that they glazed really well. And so I was able to create all the different glazes I need. You saw me do it with the magenta, but you'll see it several times throughout this video. And importantly, even when glazed, they were still very much retaining their matte property. Again, that's one of those things where sometimes when you thin paints way down, um, sometimes they'll get a little glossy or something strange will happen, but that I didn't find that to be the case here uh, in any way. So the purple was all easy peasy, lemon squeezy, got that nice tone out of there, ready to go. I then wanted to hit some of the browns. This I just played it straight. Um, this is just straight burnt umber going on these things like the skulls, the bags. I ended up doing that with the belts and all of that stuff. Nothing too exciting. It's a good brown tone. It's not quite as dark as some other burnt umbers I've seen, so I'm not sure exactly which pigment it's using. Um, but it's a good tone. I really like it. It's a nice, dark, uh, certainly more towards burnt umber than raw umber, um, but it's, it's, a, it's still got a nice amount of warmth to it. So good brown tone that's actually really effective for mixing uh, with any of the other colors you'd want. Uh, then right here, we're going to move on to the armor. Now, Nurgle armor is always really fun. Uh, it's, I really do love painting Nurgle green armor because you can take the base green, which this is excellent for. This is an extremely vibrant green. Um, it's very, very much sort of, uh, almost center of the hue green. It's, it tilts just a tiny bit blue to my eye in its base, um, formulation. Uh, but it mixes with the yellow still extremely efficiently. And so that's what I do here. I'm both going to mix in some purple and black to get a nice shadow color, um, as well as mix in some of the uh, both yellows uh, as I progress my way up to get highlights. And so then I just work my way around the Blight King, you know, creating the highlights, edge highlighting the things, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, again, pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, one of the other one of the other fun things we can do with the uh, you know, sort of a Nurgle model is test some weathering and rust and stuff like that. So uh, I went ahead and took some of the uh, brown and put that into all of the pits and things like that in the armor, as well as made a sort of wash out of it. And I found that really really easy. Um, so basically just. Uh, making a wash was very simple. Again, much like making a glaze, except you're not getting rid of all the water. 
all the liquid in your brush. Um, so these, you know, for sort of making your own washes, I actually found it was highly effective. The pigment all, because it's a high pigment load, it still maintained that, ran into the recesses, no problem, and didn't really stain much on the way of anything on the surface. So you can see how much I sort of slapped that brown around, but didn't really have any problems with it then staining the other colors. The pigment just gathered into those uh, little pits and recesses where I wanted and uh, worked great. Uh, I then wanted to show off the black here. Uh, these are going to be painted with metallic paints. So I went ahead and just blacked out the actual miniature. Now, I judge a lot in a, mini or in a uh, miniature paint range based on its black and its white. Um, and so I don't normally use the white straight ever. I always mix it in. And I found it was the white was perfect for mixing. It's very much a mixing white. So um, it's probably not using like titanium. It might be more of a zinc white. I'm not sure. Um, but either way, it was a great mixing white. Uh, and I found it worked into the other colors very naturally, and it didn't create sort of the chalkiness or opacity problems that I've seen with a lot of white, so I, that was quite favorable. Um, but it is more or less a dead white, so you have to do, you have to use it very conservatively, I would say. Um, with these weapons, though, the black is just to quickly sort of black them out, because I'm going to put metals and stuff over them, and I want nice deep shadows around the metals. And I found this worked really well, even when highly thinned, it was still turning everything jet black and very effective at it. So I really like the black in this. Um, it was actually one of my favorite colors. I, over the course of the video, I mixed it into lots of the different paints to see how it would look. It worked as a very nice uh, shade color, just bringing it into those other tones. It was effective. It didn't overwhelm them, uh, but was very matte uh, and yet maintained a lot of that like really deep, black feel. So all in all, really good color, really nice black paint. Uh, so I, I was fantastic for what I wanted it for. Um, I did paint the metal stuff uh, off camera. That's just using some metal recipes, not part of this particular review. So I went ahead and just did that. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, weather up some of the swords. Uh, and so I've got the uh, brown that I put in here. Um, as well as then this will give us a nice test of the orange, something I hadn't really got to touch yet. Um, orange is another tricky color in a lot of paint sets, and this one worked really well. Uh, the orange was very bright, very punchy, and uh, it does lose a little bit of that punch when it dries, I will say that. And I noticed that amongst a few of the colors. Um, so the brown got a little weaker and duller when it dries. I mean, this is something a lot of miniature paints do. But the brown and orange were both the two I noticed, as well as the red. I like the red. It's really strong, but it does lose a lot of vibrancy when it dries. Um, the difference between that red when it goes on straight and that red after it dries is pretty sizable. So the red, orange, and the brown, I noticed all three of them really sort of dim and dull a lot. My guess is that's the matting agent uh, or additive that's in the paints to keep them all this hyper matte is probably causing that diminishment, that change in the colors. Because when they're going on wet, they're extremely satin because they are wet and so they're reflecting much water and look a lot brighter. Um, but as the matting agent takes over and the water evaporates, we get that much duller tone. So that is something you've got to watch out for. If you're really wanting a very punchy red, um, see my recent video uh, where for the release of Death Wizards where I was painting a necromancer. There I actually use the red paint and I show you how to get it poppy through the use of fluorescent pink. But all in all, that's the Blight King more or less ready to go and was a good test of kind of every color in the range. One of the fun things about Nurgle is that it really is a chance to use basically every color. But I didn't want to stop there. Uh, the, of course, let's get out our friend and yours, uh, Larry the Ogre. We're going to use him to test the airbrush capabilities. So with the airbrushing, I found they're actually quite good airbrush paints. Getting the ratios exactly right was a little difficult. So I hadn't airbrushed with these a ton. I've actually used these uh, of quite a lot by brush before I'm recording this video. So I spent probably a couple hundred hours painting with these before uh, I did this, but I, only about a few of that, I don't know, four or five at most, was done with the airbrush. Uh, and so like getting the ratios right, I have found to be a little tricky. I think I'm, I've, I've settled on basically a two or three to one ratio, depending on the different paints. So two or three drops of thinner to one drop of paint is appropriate, um, within maybe like a wet brush to, to mix it all up. Something about that feels about right. 
Like when I initially did the skin, it was a little thin. And then from that point on, I get my mixing ratios a little better. Never had a problem. This is working with my Harder and Steenbeck um, uh, uh, Iwata. It's God in heaven, my Harder and Steenbeck uh, Infinity. That's what it is. Uh, geez, it's hard to keep the name straight. And, you know, that's a point, uh, two needle in there and never had any issue, never had any clogs, flowed through without issue. We're talking very finely ground pigment, um, certainly very airbrush ready. And as you can see, where we, you know, work through a couple different tones here, hitting the magenta up, you know, stuff like that to get some shading and some highlighting onto Larry. And, uh, as well as hitting his blue pants up, uh, also, but, uh, the, it, it airbrushed smooth. Uh, once I got my ratios dialed in, which, like I said, maybe two or three drops of thinner to one drop of paint, uh, went on super smooth, no problems with the airbrush, came out nice and consistent, everything I'd want in airbrush paint. Easy. Very easy. I think, honestly, this is uh, pretty nice for doing sort of... Uh, because all the colors are so saturated and you have to mix them, I will say mixing in an airbrush cup can be a little more tricky. So it's better if you're trying to do these very thin and put on some filters or something like that. They're actually pretty excellent for that purpose. All right, some final thoughts on these. Uh, one, like I said, love the consistency, the creaminess of it, the shared viscosity. Love that they're very matte. Um, they mix extremely well and quickly. They are mixing paints, and so that like clearly that's how they're designed, and they do mix very well. Um, these paints are extremely hydrophilic. So what I mean by that is they absorb water like crazy. Um, you might have noticed the difference in sort of the little pools of paint over the time in the background of the video or when I was mixing. That's because I had to take a small break and go eat in the middle of filming this over a course of a day. And the paint uh, just absorbs a ton of water on the wet palette. So much like Pro Acryl or something like that, that's another very hydrophilic paint, they will absorb a lot of water and they're not going to be something you can just leave on the palette and come back to the next day or even like three or four hours later and paint with if the palette's closed. It will, they will just, in that humid uh, environment, they will absorb a ton of water and become effectively useless. Um, so that is something to note as a potential challenge depending on, you know, how you paint. My ultimate read of these was they're basically an improved, much better, much more consistent Chimera. When the Chimera paints came out originally, their sort of promise was this single pigment, highly saturated paints that you would use for mixing, and, and that was the idea. The challenge was those were really inconsistent. Some were very matte, some were super satin, some were almost glossy, some were runny, some were hyper thick. And, you know, it was, they were just very, honestly, difficult to work with. I like them a lot. But once you sort of have to learn all the nuances and ins and outs, you can do really amazing things with them. Um, it's just they are extremely inconsistent paints that are very challenging for somebody who isn't willing to sort of invest the time or maybe an advanced painter. These felt much more friendly to me because everything was consistent. Everything was ready to go. Uh, you know, they, they, I just naturally thinned all the colors the same. It was maybe, you know, get it out, thin it out with maybe one brush full of water, pretty standard layering action and ready to go and paint with a high opacity, a matte finish, easy blending, easy feathering, easy glazing. So all in all, a lot of things I love about these in the plus category. The negatives are the hydrophilic nature. That is a challenge because you have, you, you can't like, if you get it out, Make sure you're in for a decent working session because otherwise the rest of that paint's going to be gone. Not the biggest deal, but it's a thing. And then the fact that you have to do all your mixes. It's an extremely limited paint set, so you have to be very comfortable with mixing and matching tones here to uh, make everything work the way you want it to effectively. All in all, I really like this set. My guess is you're going to see it in more videos coming up. Um, I think it'll become part of my rotation. Um, it's a limited palette, so that does... Uh, I tend to like to, I mix, but I don't want to mix exclusively. So, but I think this is going to be very much a set I go to, especially when I want those punchy saturated tones, or if I'm mixing various skin tones myself by hand. This is actually a great set for that, and we'll probably see a whole video in the future all about mixing skin tones that features this set. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that review. I know it was a little long, but uh, there was a lot to say. Uh, all in all, if you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions, drop those down in the comments below. Happy to answer everyone's questions about these new paints. Uh, uh,
As always, if you want to support the channel, lots of ways you can do so. There's some affiliate links down below. You can click those. It doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it often saves you money. Uh, and uh, in picking up those hobby supplies, you help support the channel. There's also, of course, our Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.